If you think this looks fun, if the idea of racing drones against your mates, turning your backyard into a racetrack looks awesome, well, trust me, it is. And if you've been thinking it's more expensive or you can't afford that, don't worry. This is the product for you. This is like the beginner's guide. It comes with everything to get started super cheap, and you can be doing this, turning your backyard into some of the most fun you have ever had with your mates. So watch this whole video because we're about to break it down and have a lot of fun. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, today, first things first, check out my hair. It is going absolutely crazy. Yes, I know, I definitely need a haircut, but let's move on to today's video, and this one, it's aimed at you people. You want to get into the hobby. You think this drone racing looks amazing, and let me tell you, it is so much fun. This is hands down the best beginner kit you can get. We've got some really high quality kit here for only $165, which is insane when you think, and that's US prices as well, which is insane when you think about, we've got goggles, a tiny hawk, and also a radio that actually does fit nicely in your hand. What Emacs is offering is ridiculous levels of fun for an absolute budget beginner entry price. So there is no better time, no better kit to ever jump in and experience the fun of FPV, and especially with mates, than a kit like this. So very quickly, when through this kit, I'm going to put a little video up there when I was over in China in the last year sometime, we looked at some prototype versions, so what we're quickly going to do, we're going to stick it on the bench, we're going to look if there's any revisions in this final production version, because this is going to be the one that you get. We'll talk more about the goggles, the radio, we'll talk about the little tiny hawk as well, because look, this thing, it is winning me over in a very, very big way. I've been having so much fun with it, you can tell that's why it's absolutely filthy. I mean like hundreds of batteries with my mates, the races we've been having is crazy, so after we look at it on the bench and stuff, we're going to go out to the field, we're going to do some BRL or backyard racing league with our mates. We're going to have, I know, Granger's out there, Wingman Jono, some other people, and you're going to see just how much fun this is. So if you and your mates are thinking about getting into FPV, this is the video for you. Now, a little bonus as well. I'm all about getting people flying. UAV Futures is all about getting people into the hobby. This kit's amazing, but to go along with it, I'm going to put, uh, I'm just going to reply to three comments down below. So I'm not going to tell you the time frame in like the next 24 hours or two days. And there's going to be, I'm going to put some CD keys in there for a SIM key as well. So if you want a chance at winning one of those, make sure you put your comments down below. You might be the first person that gets notified when the key goes live and you can redeem that on Steam as well. So anyway, there's some free keys for you guys, but let's kick it off, stick it on the bench and find out why the Tiny Hawk Ready to Fly kit is absolutely amazing. If you want to get in the hobby, this is the best time ever and the best pizza kit we have ever had. Radio, here it is on the bench. We've got the goggles, the radio, and the Tiny Hawk. And I should say too, look, it does come with a nice big carry case, and let's get some of the boring bits out of the way. You also get some spare props, USB cables, charger, and some little bits and pieces, spare uh, battery lead, all that sort of stuff, tiny little screwdriver. That stuff, that's a boring bit. Let's get that out of the way. I want to talk about, this is the main kit right here, the fun stuff, and then we can go out and have some fun, fly it around, and show you how much fun these things can be. But as an overview, what this is, it's just a ready-to-fly package where you get this, you can take it out, charge it up, fly around, have an awesome time, experience FPV with some good quality stuff that's going. you're going to enjoy and you're going to really enjoy this hobby, get the most out of it and if you combine it with some mates, well then you are on to a dead set recipe for one of the best hobbies you have ever seen. You're going to, you guys are going to love this. If you haven't tried FPV, you can tell how excited I am in this video. But anyway, well, let's kick it off. What we should probably do first, I'm going to start with the radio because this does make a big difference. This is your connection to your drone this is how you're interacting with it and in the past we have had little things like this so these tiny usually when you get a cheaper ready to fly kit that includes everything oh, what's this oh that's the little battery for the thing anyway usually this is the radios that you get these things they feel rubbish they don't feel good they take dodgy batteries in the back this bad boy it feels great in your hands. You don't have to be. A, you don't have to have tiny children, childlike hands. You can put your strong hands on here, and uh, it's very, very simple. So it's nice. You've got your antenna on there. It's very easy to turn on. You hold your middle button. All you've got, then there's no other switches or anything to get you confused besides your little arm switch and your mode switch. So these two switches up there, some three position switches. It charges by USB, which I absolutely love. And if I take this out of the back here, let me show you another part I love. Now I need to find that little screwdriver. Where did I throw it? Yeah. This one will do. This is not the one that came with it, but uh, it'll do. My bench is a bit of a mess at the moment. 
So we take this off. You can see it's got an 18650 in there. Now these batteries, they last for ages and they're very, very reliable. You don't have to worry about it catching on fire. It's not like a LiPo or anything like that. So that battery is amazing. So we've got that and I love how it charges by USB. The radio, it feels great in your hand. If you're a pincher, I don't think you're gonna have quite as much luck. Yes, you can still do it and it feels okay. I'm not a natural pincher anyway. Usually I just fly with thumbs, but I've got to say it feels very, very comfortable in your hands. It is my better than one of these little things and the reception that you get the range on you, that you get on this thing isn't too bad either so I'm a big big fan of course some little adaptions I would like maybe if they gave us some longer sticks that we could just simply click on some little extra bits of plastic that would accommodate for people if they wanted to pinch on some taller sticks or something like that but overall I think for the price you're going to pay the 165 bucks to get a radio like this that is going to work well it actually binds up on the free sky protocol which is something that is very very important the free sky protocol has a rock solid link so it's on d8 right there you're not going to be getting any fail safes to get a radio like that well that's uh that's it's kind of amazing actually in this day and age in our hobby i'm very very impressed now the next thing let's talk about these bad boys are right here what we've got we've got these goggles now i don't actually know if they've got a technical name but these emax goggles i'm it's the same thing it's keeping it simple it's making it easy for people to fly with some good kit now the important parts we've got diversity we've got a nice big bright screen in here it fits well on your face i've got to say there is a little bit of light leakage and you do get some little foam pads you can stick down there again i love what they're doing with the batteries so you can see we've got an 18650 that's how you charge it in there as well these batteries i absolutely love charged by usb that's fantastic it simply clicks click plug clips in the back this cord it goes to the front you plug it in it does have a fan inbuilt in there and I, you can maybe hear that fan a little bit so that fan might be a little bit noisy for some people noisier than some fans anyway but that's pumping a bit of air around you can see your screens in there very simple with your menu your auto scan and then you just channels and frequencies so it's very quick to cycle through uh, and I also love in a cheap goggle like this, you've got some little sliders, which means usually the cheaper goggles, if you're having trouble focusing them on these little box goggles, you might feel a little bit cross-eyed or they're like they're straining your eyes. I'm going to say I didn't feel that with this pair and you'll see what Granger and Jono think about it as well when they're flying it around. But overall, the goggles following the same design philosophy, it's simple. It's reliable, it works well, it's got diversity, it's got a great battery solution. So yeah, I think this is a little winner as well. A really, really good pair of box goggles and I don't normally like box goggles. And again, the price, super cheap. Now, of course, if they wanted to take it to next level, there would be two little additions I would say you can add. So number one, you can do this as well. I'll link some extra antennas down below. If you wanted to put some better antennas on here, you can definitely do that to get a little bit better video feed. I wasn't having any issues though in our backyard racing, which is kind of what these are made for flying around indoors and number two i don't know if it'd be possible but maybe in a revision two for a little bit more extra money it'd be great if we just had a little sd card in here we could put our sd card in and press record that would make these goggles like i don't even know if you could design them any better especially considering the cheap price so we'll put that to the side and then finally, I want to talk a little bit more about my Tiny Hawk because I'm going to zoom this in a little bit, actually. Excuse me. Right here. So here's the Tiny Hawk. And what I have really come to realize is I was racing this a lot against my Mobula 7. When I first got one of these, I bound it up to my proper radio that I use every day. Of course, it's on Free Sky, And it didn't have the insane 2S performance that we're used to on the Mobula. And I was taking this thing out to the park and those big open spaces, it really felt like with the Mobula, I was flying a five inch. You've seen the footage or if not, I'll put some on the screen. It's insane. But this thing, I've got to be honest, I've been flying it more and more. And when I get together with my mates and we all fly around, fly around these things together, you might have a smaller environment. You might be flying around indoors. You might be flying around in someone's backyard like we're about to say, show you. You don't need so much space to still get some amazing experiences. It works flawlessly out of the box. It's very stable. It's got a great camera. And my favorite thing, not only does it have a whole bunch of features like smart audio and stuff like that, you get good flight times, but also... It is ridiculously ro robust. I mean, hundreds of crashes, full speed into walls, into poles, and this thing, it just keeps on giving, keeps on going. The only thing that's happened a few times is the little camera pops out, and you can see this one's a little bit loose, and all you have to do is sort of squeeze it, force it back in there, and it takes about two seconds to fix that. So overall, the Tiny Hawk, I've got to say, 
it has really, really grown on me. I can't recommend this enough for a beginner because it has more speed than uh, a lot of people can handle in a very, very tight course. You can see you can really, really push this thing, especially if you've got skills like Ranger who you're about to see. But number one, durability. This is a beginner's drone and it is designed for beginners to take an absolute beating, get people flying. People don't want to drop a whole heap of cash in our hobby and then have something that's going to break and not work. I don't know how many times in the past in other hobbies or with expensive drones or anything, people have tried that. It's broken, then they're not flying, they're not having a good time, they don't want to reinvest because they're worried they're going to crash it and break it again. This one, it is almost unbreakable. I'd say out of the four we were flying around and hundreds and hundreds of crashes, one of these little struts is broken right here. So a little bit of hot glue should fix that up. But other than that, and it still flies perfectly fine. Other than that, that's my favorite thing. Not only how nice they fly, but how durable. I can't stress that enough. If you want, if you're a beginner and you want to get in, try this, and you, you, you need something that you aren't going to be afraid to crash, well, Bob's your uncle. This is definitely your answer right here. The Emax Tiny Hawk ready to fly kit. Now that's it on the bench. You can see I'm very excited. Let's really go have some fun. Show you what this is all about. Shout out to Jono, uh, Granger, but went out to Benny's house. He had a Barbie, some other people out there. It was awesome. And I've got to say, it was one of the best FPV sessions I have had in... in a very, very long time. And the setup was so easy as well. Usually with my five inches, you take it out. You've got to get the right space. You've got to worry about crashing, things breaking, you know, setting up these huge gates. We had a racetrack ready to roll in like 10 minutes and we flew like... Like I said, hundreds of packs. We were charging so many. Oh, and you do get one battery. I wish this thing came with an extra battery. I'll put some extra battery links down below. Definitely think about picking those up because trust me, you're going to want some more. It is so much fun. But let's do it. Enough rambling. Let's go rip it around and have some real racing action with the Tiny Hawks in three, two, one. Rightio, out here in Benny's backyard. We're about to fly around and have some BRL for our backyard racing league. We're at Benny's place. Wingman John O'Granger, some other crew here flying around, but uh, we'll also test out the Tiny Hawk ready to fly kit. Let's do it. Okie dokie, we're just jumping straight in with some crazy DVR action all throughout the race. We, had, we probably did hundreds of batteries this day. It was so fun. Complete chaos too. Drones going everywhere. People running all over the place. It is, uh, I think, it probably one of the most funnest sessions in terms of just good round laughs, having a blast, people giggling, crashing into each other. It was absolutely awesome. And this is where I feel like I was wrong when I first reviewed the Tiny Hawk because I was doing it in a different environment. I was going out to the park. I was treating it more like, I guess, a little bit more like a freestyle drone. And it wasn't this beginner drone where you can get together. You can have a real race like this. So, and of course, they can take an absolute heap of beatings and crashes. I love this drone for this sort of racing. When you get some mates together, it's easy to fly. It is super durable and just buckets and buckets of fun in a small space and not everybody has huge spaces to fly the weight limit it doesn't hurt anything it doesn't bother anybody you can set up a course indoors look at that four four of them flying around that tiny little like over and under gate we had there the corkscrew we were calling it just a really really cool thing so overall i am very very happy with this drone and i would recommend it a lot for anybody who wants to pick something up start flying learn what fpv is about and if you can get some friends together even better and that's what fpv is all about getting together with your mates and having a flight now here i want to mention this is pretty cool probably my favorite crash of the day blasted wingman Jono. check this out i was getting some good laps in overtook him there we're having a good back and forth all through the races and then coming up here i think i might come close to having a little stack after the corkscrew but the sneaky devil decides to sneak underneath me and you just see what happens so here he does a nice little overpass gives it too much and then crashes off the top straight down into me so uh this was my favorite thing it looked awesome in the goggles in the dvr to cop that this is nice to be able to check this out outdoors last time it was indoors in a low light environment and the screen i am getting a little bit of light leakage under here but nothing that you can't fly through nothing that's distracting or anything like that maybe if we had some darker plastic on here would keep it a bit brighter but also the white means it's not going to get as hot now i'm going to try the auto search function Let's see it's taken a little while to scan through i never really like auto function auto search functions anyway oh wait that's your one Sorry, no, it'll be on one of you. It'll be on F1. Yeah. It's gone through the high band. And look, wouldn't you know it? It stopped on F1. So it actually worked, which is surprising. So Now, there's no DVR, so uh, you're not going to get any flight impressions. But this is more on the goggles themselves and the radio. And we've been flying these things all day as well. So this will be a good comparison, I guess, between... I've been using HDOs and also my X light, but to go back to this, uh, yeah, get that bit of foil out of here <laughs> to uh, 
see what see what a bit of a comparison this is like. Okay. Now maybe I need to plug and replug. We've had that sitting on oh, the ground for ages off. too. That's why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I switched off so Grager wouldn't mess with it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Alright. And I think we're actually on low battery here. Benny, can I steal an eighteen six fifty? Okay, let's see if we can do this little course we've got set up around here. The radio, the ra oh god, no! <laughs> oh, I did put the rates up a little bit, so uh, I'm gonna say, I thought this radio, the radio has obviously come a long way, they've listened. When I first flew this thing, I thought it was really, really docile, so I put the rates up a little bit indoors, but I probably put them up a little bit more than I should have. I've gotta be a little bit more careful. I'm not getting too much flicker or anything like that. Oh, where, where am I? I'm almost going over the house. <laughs> I am on Benny's roof. I'm getting pushed around a little bit by the wind. Coming in for the hills hoist. Oh, God. Rightio, so I've decided I can't talk and fly at the same time. Probably because I'm waving my arms around way too much. I'm not used to it, but I'm going to give you my impressions now that I've stopped flying. The radio, I do like how they've increased the rates a little bit from when I first tried it over in China. Everything else feels pretty much the same. It fits in your hands nicely. I love how it's nice and simple. It's ergonomic. It's going to be comfortable. Of course, it's not going to be as good as your X-Lite or anything like that. And as far as the goggles go, I feel like, I don't know if these are sold separately, but I do think they should be. Because really, I don't think there might be, a, I don't think there's a better cheaper option out there so for what you get in the kit I like how they're adjustable no DVR which is a little bit of a shame but they fit your face well the auto function the auto scan function actually really work the screens nice and bright and yeah overall I think they've done a pretty good job considering it's aimed at you budget or beginner flyers out there so if you want to pick it up you want to learn flying you just want something fun to fly around get other people involved got some things blowing around here it is a little bit windy but yeah I think uh, thumbs up um, yeah. Anyway, what we should do, let's hand it over to Wingman Jono and then Granger the Whiz Kit as well, see what they think about the Emax Ready to Fly Tiny Hawk Kit. Radio Wingman Jono with the summertime singlet, <laughs> uh, whipping the guns out for the ladies. Ooh. But what do you reckon? Okay, so I've got this on, it's all plugged in, you should be getting a little bit before we fly around. What's yeah. your first impressions of the goggles? First impressions is, holy crap, it's been a while since I used box goggles. <laughs> do you not, do you like box goggles? Um, I, I actually do like them because I find um, I can you, you know, view the corners of the screens easier and stuff like that. I get the blurring at the corner of the screens if I'm using pretty much any of the, the diopter ones or whatever you call mm -hmm. them. So I actually like box goggles but I just don't like how big they are that's basically it okay um, yeah, what do you so, think about the size of these ones then um, yeah like it's it's a nice size really easy to view it seems like it doesn't matter how I focus it it's all in focus for me which is really nice yeah so you're not, are you getting very much eye strain uh, no, none at all, which is really good. Yep, actually, yeah. yep that's the radio in mm. your hands. In the hands, all right. So before you actually take off, how does that feel in your hands? Yeah, it's, it's a nice size. I like the thumbstick size. It feels very uh, Xbox-ish in terms of size. Um, the throttle feels a little bit like light, like loose. It could deal with like some notchiness like the uh, Tyrannosaurus have in my opinion. Sure, but I should say too, this is like as budget as you can get. This whole yeah. kit with the Tiny Hawk is $165. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll leave that up to you anyway. What do you think about that for the price then? Oh, for the price, yeah, definitely. Definitely, it's a nice one. Like, it feels nice and sturdy. The switches feel nice and stuff like that. Like, everything else on it feels nice. The only thing I, I feel like is a little bit, like, it feels like the throttle's a little bit loose, but it depends on what you like, really, I guess. Do you know what it actually run me off is, you know those really cheap ones that look like the jelly beans, those first little mm, dimples? Yeah, it's get? like a big yeah. one of those, but it doesn't feel as lousy as one of those, that's for sure. Okay. Like, yeah. Are you ready to go for a bit of a flight? Yeah, we'll give it a roll. I bet you I crash. Rock and roll. Uh, you are good to go. See ya. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, you did the rates up on this. I know, I did them a bit too high. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, you know what? Like, besides uh, you cranking the rates into overdrive mode, it's actually quite um, flyable. You know, given it's actually like really ratey and I'm still got decent control over it, it says that the uh, controller's Let definitely all right. All right, so uh, we'll talk about the controller first. How's yeah. it feeling when you're actually flying? Uh, yeah, yeah, it feels nice. It's very, very usable. It feels like, like sort of like those like jelly bean ones, but like a bit better. Yeah, like you get used to this pretty uh, quickly. Almost, <laughs> almost, almost through your leg. Tried the gap, didn't yeah. get it. Yeah, um, I reckon like uh, after about like you know not, not even five minutes of flying, I reckon I get used to this and be able to power out some good laps. As for the goggles, um, yeah, they're nice. The um, the display isn't like the highest clarity. Whoops, but. Um, <laughs> Just yeah. trying to wreck that tiny hawk, bro. Yeah, yeah they are very durable. Give it yep. the torture test. Uh, 
Yeah, no, the screen's nice. It's not the best resolution, but it doesn't need to be. You can still see where you're going. You can see gates fine. <laughs> okay, did you crash though? For the, I yeah, yeah, you. I did crash. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. all right, no worries. Yeah. I think you're good to take off again, but we can just finish this here. Yeah, yeah. so what were your thoughts on the goggles? Because you crashed it, but what did you think about the goggles? No, they're, they're, they're nice, they're good, they're in focus. Yeah, they've got a decent enough resolution that you can see where you're going, you can see the gates. Um, yeah, for, for a budget one like this, they're perfectly fine. I'd say they're easily comparable to something more expensive like the um, EV800s or something like that. Mm -hmm. like, you yeah. get a lot of people triggered for saying that. Oh, no, really? Like Is that a bit of a bit yeah, of a touchy anyway, point? Yeah. I didn't realise. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, right, no, so who would you recommend them for? Yeah, definitely good beginners kit. Absolutely. Yeah, if you're looking to get out and like actually, actually start like rolling straight away, um, perfect. All right, nice. Thanks, wingman Jono. Alrighty, Granger, the whiz kid, you've been putting out some hot laps. We'll have to put some of your DVR, right? We're going to record some of your DVR. We'll overlay that while you've been flying around because you've been killing it today. But also, before we kick it off, what do you think about the Tiny Hawk? I quite like the Tiny Hawk. There's not much to it and it's very hard to break. And for a beginner, I think it's one of the best micro quads out there. I like the design of it, how they've uh, made the props underneath. Uh, so when you hit something, they are you're less likely to break a prop, but the props seem to do fly off a bit. That's the side. You're about to take it off. Uh, how's that radio feel in your hands? Uh, it feels quite fine. I could get used to it and as a beginner, I mean, they're not going to know much else So it'll be fine. All right, ready to and, and what do you normally fly as well? Because you for those people at home who might not know you usually have the goods of the goods what do you, what uh, The do you fly FR with? Sky X9D. Yeah, yeah, the special edition the one. The special edition. It's yeah. got the cool colors. Yeah, and some fat sharks yeah. and forge modules So we've gone from extreme <laughs> to extreme yeah. budget. Yeah, yeah, All right, let's do it. All right, All right. Okie dokie Granger talk to me we're, not, we're less about the drone because everybody's already seen the oh, Tiny yeah. Hawk review. I want to hear about the goggles a little bit and then yeah. I want to hear about the radio. So what do you reckon of those cheap goggles? Uh, the goggles are quite nice. I mean, they're quite like those E-Sheen goggles. I uh, can't remember the name. But um, there's a bit of light leakage at the nose, but I don't think it really matters that often. I'm not paying attention to it. The uh, controller, uh, it's not too bad. I fly pinch, but I have to oh, fly yeah, thumbs right. for this. Oh yeah, that's right, you're flying thumbs for this. But as a beginner, because this is aimed at beginners, uh, I mean, you're gonna fly thumbs straight away anyways, most of the time. So this is actually, it's a very smooth, the gimbals are very nice. Really? Very smooth. Yeah, they're very smooth. There's no notch in them. Um, as a beginner, that's I feel like they would like that. Not as uh, precise as uh, an expensive radio, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely not bad. I feel like there's a teeny bit of latency between like when I go left and right yep uh, but nothing I can't get used to sure all right so uh, would you what do you think about this for beginner pilots absolutely amazing do I would, you, did do you wish you started on something like this? yeah I definitely wish I was gonna get one of those DYS things but if this was out I would have gotten one of these so this is did actually you almost crash that over the fence no, no I, I in the bush somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jono. Yeah. All right. So your final thoughts on the whole kit for 165 bucks? 165 bucks. That's amazing, and that's going to get a lot of people in the hobby because really this stuff's pretty expensive, and these companies are trying to make it as cheap as they can, and I think this is a great step. So was it comfortable on your face? Because I do notice you uh, have a mark up there. It's not too bad. I felt like I was looking a bit cross-eyed, but mm -hmm. I w I'd be fine with it. If this is all I could afford. I'd have a great time with this. All right. No, is anything you didn't like? Uh, no, not really. I liked it all. What about you, Jono? Where is Jono? Anything you didn't like? Or anything you'd want to change? Uh, I, like I said, I'd feel like a bit more tension in the throttle, but that's just me being fussy. For a beginner, they're not going to no notice that. Um, for a beginner kit, uh, I reckon that's uh, pretty good. You know what? I wish, oh, actually, a binding. So, oh, yeah, binding was yeah. a pain, but also if you could get some longer parts here. So if you did want to pinch, pinch just some yeah. little bits of extra plastic that made it a little bit longer, mm. wouldn't cost very much, and uh, I think that'd be a nice little addition. Yeah, I definitely reckon they can make the um, binding more straightforward. Oh, on I here? Yeah. yeah. Well, if we had a manual, that would probably be straightforward. <laughs> it does come bound, but we'd unbound it, and then getting it back was yeah. a pain. All right, nice. Thanks, lads. Radio, so there it is. There's my review of the Emacs ready to fly kit and overall I'm gonna say it is amazing. It's probably one of the best products we have ever seen. Emacs has really just done their homework and made something special for us pilots. They believe in get, getting people flying. That's what UAV Futures is all about as well and I absolutely love how easy it is for people to get into the hobby. The remote, it works better than any of the other cheap jelly bean ones that we're so used to. It feels great in your hands. It's not over complicated with too many switches. You've got your mode switch, your arm switch, a few trims, you're ready to rock and roll. It's got a great 18650 battery in there, charges by USB. This thing, 
is so simple and it and just works as well. Now, as far as the goggles go, they are perfectly adequate. We've got diversity in here. You've got a slider option if it's nicely on your head. Uh, it also is charged by an 18650 by USB, which is amazing. Super simple buttons as well. You know, your menu, menu, auto search, and then just your channels. There is not much rigmarole. So that means there's less things that can go wrong. There's less things that can get pilots confused. It is so easy. You can pretty much pick this up, plug and play, and have a ton of fun. And then to top it off, I really think that this is the best 1S Whoop out there and it's it's kind of grown on me a lot as well because I've been having so much fun and I know a lot of people compare it to the Mobula 7 and hands down I think the Mobula 7 has better performance. That thing absolutely screams on a 2S. But if, if you're doing some indoor racing, maybe you just want to fly around your house, maybe you want to fly around your backyard, you can still have an absolute ball with these like you saw with Granger and we'll put some extra footage at the end there. The, the racing you can get on these things is next level. It is so much fun and robust. I've got to say, I don't think there is a more robust quadcopter. So if that's what beginners want, they want something they can crash over and over and over. This thing has crashed, like I would say we probably crashed hundreds of times just in yesterday. So the only thing I've broken is like a little strut, I think on one of them out of all four Tiny Hawks, one of the little struts up here was snapped, so I'll have to put some hot glue back there to fix that. But overall, I have, I am completely amazed at how much crashing this can take and keep on going. And even better too, they do give you a spare set of props, which was something I didn't like with the first one. You just got the original Tiny Hawk. I like how this comes with the second set as well. So anyway, what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. I'm going to reply for some SIM keys. So definitely stay tuned. So stick around for that because make sure, I don't know how that works, if you get a bell or a notification or whatever it is, but I'm going to be posting some SIM keys. So good luck if you get those so you can practice flying on Steam. Uh, other than that, oh, I want to give a shout out too to all the people at Discord. I've been jumping on there a fair bit lately. If you're new to FP, TV, jump over the link should pop up here that should be down below discord is just a place we get together talk all things fpv and we've been having so much fun on there so i've pretty much been on there the last pretty much every night in the last week big shout out to people like drop bear mark rob uh there's there's so many people on there xander broke they're just a whole bunch of really cool guys we get on there we're talking about fpv every night helping people get flying so yeah shout out to the people over on discord the patreon people over on discord it's just been an awesome time as well. So FPV, it's feeling good. I'm feeling good. This kit is feeling good. Definitely check it out. I'll put the link down below. Subscribe for more FPV related beginner ready to fly Emacs Tiny Hawk action. And as always, happy flying.